Brothers and sisters, I want to talk today about the prodigal son. The prodigal son is a story that is so deep and is so relevant to today, to tomorrow, and to yesterday. It's one of those stories that even if you use this story today, it makes so much sense in terms of God's love, God's acceptance, and God's willingness to welcome you with open arms, despite the fact that you or or a person may feel um, that they're unworthy. Amen? And if you're not familiar with the story of the prodigal son, let me just paraphrase it just a little bit. Amen? I want to go through it because there's a lot of people out there that just don't feel worthy enough. Just feels that all of their sins, if you compound it and just mash it down a little bit in a jar, that it will be full to the brim. And it will be something that if, you know, you just hand it up to God that he's not... He's not even going to think twice about giving you a second chance. That is so disgusting to, to God that um, it's just unworthy. But what you have to realize, brothers and sisters, is that God loves the sinner. He does not love the sin. Amen? So, let me give you an example of the prodigal son and how God's love is so, 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 so wonderful in that regard. Amen. So the prodigal son, pretty much, I'm going to paraphrase, it was about two brothers, a man who initially lived um, with their father and um, the father gave both of them an inheritance. Amen. A blessed inheritance. And it was a financial inheritance back then, if you would. And the younger son, amen, took his inheritance and just went out in the world and squandered the money, lived it up, had a good old party time, just blew the money, just was going out and soared his wild oats, probably just doing everything and anything that, that he was big and bad to do. Amen. But the youngest son stayed behind. The youngest son stayed home. He was working with the father. He was looking at himself, quote unquote, as the good son. Amen. The good, good son who uh, obeyed his father, who did everything right in his father's eyes. And uh, basically what happened was that the younger son, he squandered all his money and it, he got so destitute and so desperate to the fact that he literally ate the slop that the pigs were eating. It got that bad, brothers and sisters. Amen. And I think about a lot of people out there, whether you be a prostitute, whether you be a junkie, a drug addict, that's just, you know, doing anything and everything to get that next high or a person who's looking to be recognized, whether it be fame or fortune or just doing everything that the devil, um, <laughs> has designed them um, to do, to say, the way they act. Um, I'm here to let you know that as long as you have breath in your mouth, that life that's still in you, that God loves you, and that you still have a chance to come on home. So, back to the story. So the younger brother, you know, he uh, he got to the point where he just was pretty much down and out and there was no other way to go but up amen so he humbled himself and he went on back home he went back home amen so he was just thinking in his heart maybe he would beg his father just to have some type of subservient job maybe he can work you know for his father just to win his good graces back or just to you know just do something you know to get out of his circumstance amen so the younger the older brother excuse me he already you know was looking at as he was coming back home and he knew he was just cutting up out there and uh he was pretty much just waiting for the <laughs> father to get him get up get up you know i'm the good one i'm the good one get the bad one he's out there cutting up but the father didn't do that brothers and sisters he didn't what he did do 
was tell one of the servants to get the best, best robe and to put it on my son and to make this big feast, this welcome feast of a party for him to come on back home, brothers and sisters. And that's the same thing what the Lord is telling you to do in so many ways. Don't ever, ever feel that just because you've been dancing with the devil year upon year upon year and you've been soaking in that mud pit that God still doesn't love you, that you're worthless. You know why? Because I was in that mud pit. Sure was. I uh, was intrigued with the world. Sure, I fell. I did many things that was not pleasing to God. I fornicated. I did things that was contrary to God's words. Absolute God's word. Excuse me. Absolutely. And it made me feel dirty. It made me feel ugly. It made me feel unworthy. It made me feel disgusting. It made me feel like, you know, how can this God that everybody's talking about Love a sinner like me with all of the mud on me. But he did. He loved me. And I know it in my heart. And you know what, brothers and sisters? He washed me clean. And I got baptized, brothers and sisters. And that's very important to get baptized. Because as you go in that water, it's actually a burial. You're going down. That old person is being dead. And that person that rises back out of that water is the new you brothers and sisters that's why they say it's born again you're being born again brothers and sisters you're proclaiming to the world that you've been born again and it's very important amen just like i heard a brother same use the same analogy when a person gets married amen and they say to their their bride or or you know would you marry me and that person in, in this in the spirit you know Yes, they, 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 they agree, amen, to marry that person. And then when they display it to the people at the wedding, amen, it's the same analogy in terms of uh, in, a, in a, a physical realm, amen, to represent that. And it's very important to make an open show of um, what your convictions are and what you stand for. Okay, back to the prodigal son. I'm getting a little bit too deep. Um so the prodigal son, he gets back home. He he's he's being loved, and of course, his brother is vexed. His brother is very upset, and his brother's like, "Wait a minute, wait a minute! I just knew you were gonna like bash him and smash him and beat him up, and you know, and you're loving on him. Why are you doing this? I'm over here doing the right thing, amen. <laughs> I'm over here doing the right thing, not sinning. He's working for you, slaving, and and where's my reward? Brothers and sisters, we have to realize one thing. That Jesus came for the sinner, the broken, the sick. He didn't come for the people who are righteous, righteous, righteous. Or think that they're perfect, perfect, perfect. He came for the broken. He came for the lost. So, the father explained to the oldest son, You're okay. You're going to be okay. But this one right here, he needs help. Hashanda, and I'm here to help them. And brothers and sisters, we need to we need to subscribe to that same philosophy. We need to know that God loves us, no matter what the devil is trying to tell you in your head. You're not good enough. You did this. You did that. You did condemnation, torment, which makes you feel unworthy. Brothers and sisters, he's looking for your heart. He's looking for dedication. He's looking for faith. He's looking for consistently consistency, excuse me. Once you get saved, you have things to do, brothers and sisters. It's not just, okay, you accept Jesus and then you go on living the way you were living. There's a transformation there, brothers and sisters. There's a change in your lifestyle, in, in the way you think. There, 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 there's a heavenly mindset that's supposed to come about. And... <sighs> Salvation, you can't put a price on it. Amen. It's not like, you know, a, a lottery ticket that you, uh, you know, if you do good, if you do good, you do good, you do good, you feel that you're doing good, 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 that it guarantees you a ticket to heaven. It's not like that, brothers and sisters. Salvation is a gift. Brothers and sisters, if you are right now struggling in sin and you want to come on back home, if you feel that, you know, you're ready to surrender amen 
and repent and humble yourself. The time is now, brothers and sisters. Tomorrow's not guaranteed, amen? There's a lot of people that pass away. There's so many people that passed away before I had the sentence and didn't make heaven, brothers and sisters. That's serious talk. Are you the prodigal son? Are you a little bit filthy? Do you feel unworthy? I'm here to tell you, come on back. Accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior from your heart. Not because I'm saying it. It's because this world is not designed <laughs> to last. This body is not designed to last. It will grow old. It will break down. But your spirit and your soul, it's, it, it, it's eternal. And we need to invest in your eternal, brothers and sisters. We need to start, really, really stop putting so much emphasis on the outward and invest in spiritual things. Getting to know, you know, about your Lord and Savior. Getting to know about your master, who you really serve. Do you serve the God of this world? Or do you serve, amen, the God who is God of all? I pray for you. You continue to pray for me as well. We all are work in progress. But there's one thing I do know for sure. Is that there's no exit in hell, brothers and sisters. Choose life. Choose the Lord Christ.